hello everyone. Thanks for joining um, what juniors should be doing now to prepare for college. Um, I'm Michelle Honore. I have been a school counselor for the last 13 years and I'm streaming from St. Augustine, Florida. Um, so thank you for joining in tonight. Um, I imagine you have started your Christmas break or holiday break. So um, this presentation is, even though it's called what you should be doing right now, um, I know that you're on break. So I want you to take this time to relax and recharge. Um, so the things that I go over tonight is more of just things to be aware of for your junior year. Um, and if you are parents in the audience, um, these are things for your students or your children to be aware of. Um, but again, I know that you're on break, so nothing you need to um, get started with this very second. So thanks for joining in tonight. Um, for the live stream, I have a presentation to go over. If questions come up throughout the presentation, you can um, type those in. And then depending on time at the end, I'll go through and um, answer as many of those that I can. So we'll go ahead and get started so I can cover all this uh, fun stuff. We can begin the presentation. So for today, there's a lot of things that um, you should be doing junior year, but this is a 30 minute presentation. So we're limited on what we can cover. So the things we're gonna cover today are letters of recommendation, standardized testing, academics, extracurriculars. Um, and I put application on there. I just feel like I might not have time to cover that. So there'll be part two um, after the new year because I wanna leave some time for um, questions at the end. Next slide. All right, so we're gonna, um, I already said who I am, Michelle Honore. So if you were just joining right now, um, I've been a school counselor. I'm located in Florida. Um, most of my school counseling has been in North Carolina and South Carolina. So if I have anyone in the audience in those states, um, hello. And uh, I'm also now a College Vine advisor. So if you are a junior um, needing some extra help, that's what the College um, Vine is here for. So there's a lot of great live streams out there. But if you're left with extra questions, like um, meeting with a college advisor is a great way to get some extra advice, um, especially if you're in a large school um, that you have a school counselor and it's hard to get in there and get your questions answered. Um, that's why College Vine is a great resource. So we are going to dive right in to those letters of recommendations. Next slide. So letters of recommendation, these are the main things we're gonna cover, making sure you ask ahead of time, prepare a resume, and then choosing who you ask to write your letters. Next slide. So asking ahead of time. Um, so right now we're like halfway through your junior year. So this is your time you start thinking about um, asking. So I don't feel like you need to ask at this given time. I'm um, asking at the end of this year, it would be the best time. Um, that makes sure that gives your teachers enough time to prepare those letters. So if they wanted to work on them over the summer, they could. Um, or just letting them know that when um, they get back from summer break, they have your letter to write. So if you're able to ask before you go um, on summer break, it's also great because then you can ask in person. Um, and it's also a way of showing that you're being mindful of their time. Um, teachers can also be parents and they can also do things outside of school. So just being mindful of their time. So you're letting them know months in advance that you're gonna need a letter. Um, so you're not, you know, putting it on them right there when it's needed because um, that adds some extra pressure to them as well. Next slide. And then um, preparing a resume. So if you are a junior and you don't have one yet, that is okay. Um, that's something you could work on this summer if you haven't worked on one before. Um, a resume is gonna outline your skills and things that you've um, done. And if you are a student that you haven't had a job yet and you're like, I don't have a resume because I haven't had a job, um, a resume can include things that you've done, like volunteer activities, maybe you help out your parents at their business, sort of showcasing your skills um, and your experiences. Um, I've had students include their test scores, so if that's something you're comfortable with sharing, that lets your teachers know your, um, your strengths. Uh, a lot of times teachers don't know that information. Sometimes we think they can look that up. They don't have access to all your personal information. So test scores can go on a resume. Also your extracurriculars, um, that's what that EC stands for. So a lot of times we think our teachers know everything that we're involved in, um, but they don't know it all. So this is a way for letting them know what's important to you. 
um, and it also helps them understand your goals. So when it's, it says prepare a resume and also include a brag sheet, um, as a school counselor, I would offer a brag sheet to my juniors to complete. So if you have not heard of that before, um, you could ask your school counselor if they have one, um, or you could do a Google search and find what to include on your brag sheet. But that's a way to brag about things that are important to you. So that way, when the teacher goes to write your letter of recommendation, they have really important information that's important to you. Um, so they're not just going to pull in what they know about you as a student in their classroom. They're going to be able to pull in also the things that you do outside of school. So don't just assume your teachers know everything about you. Um, this is just going to help them write you a stronger letter. Next slide. And then as far as who to ask, I think a lot of times as students were like, oh, I know who I'm going to ask. They're my favorite teacher. It's great to ask those teachers that you're close with because they can pull in your personal characteristics. Um, but this is where you want to be thoughtful with who you ask because a lot of colleges don't want 10 letters to read. Um, so they're going to, and that's another thing you can um, check to see what the college's requirements are as far as how many letters. Um, those more competitive colleges are going to want at least um, two letters of recommendation. And so that's where you want to plan out, like, who do I ask? Um, so if you're thinking of a major already, and I'm going to, we have a lot of people on the audience. So like when I'm saying these things, if you don't have a major, you have an idea of something you might want to go into, then asking a teacher that teaches that subject. Um, if you are like, I know I want to go into medicine, then you're going to, you know, check with your biology teacher. So think about the majors you may want to go into. That can be a good teacher um, to ask for your letter. And um, when it says letters should complement each other. So if you are going to apply to a college that requires more than one letter of recommendation, your letter should be from different teachers, different school years. Um, so what you want to think about is when you apply to college, the reader of your application is going to have these letters to um, see a bigger picture about you. So having two letters from your 10th grade teachers, that might leave them questioning why is it just from 10th grade year? Why not from 11th grade year? Or same thing if you're just asking two of your junior year teachers. So when it says complement each other, um, think about teachers of different subjects and then also teachers that know different sides of you. So maybe you want to go into medicine, so you're going to ask that science teacher, but you also have this, you know, maybe you're thinking of um, the struggles you had in another class. So maybe you didn't have the best grade in this teacher's class, but that teacher can really speak on how hard you worked, all the extra time you met with them after school. So it's going to show them your growth. Um, they can talk about that in the letter, your perseverance. So a lot more can go into it when you, it's not just the teacher that knows what a strong student you are. So um, look at the college's requirements so that way you get a feel for how many letters you're going to need. Um, you know, I don't know what program your school uses for requesting those letters. Um, so if you're like a school that uses Naviance, some students get carried away with like asking too many teachers. And one thing you have to keep in mind that they take time to write those letters, so you want to make sure they're going to be read. So if a school says they require one with an option of two, good idea to include two. So that's going to give the colleges a better picture of who you are as a student. Um, so if it says like two is the maximum, if you submit five, they're not going to read five. So checking what those college requirements are. And then also when you ask those teachers and you're including your resume and you're including your brag sheet, they can put together a pretty solid letter. So it's not just going to talk about your love for um, physics or whatever that teacher teaches. Um, they're also going to be able to pull in those things that are important to you. All right, next slide. So another thing um, that's important to know for junior year is that standardized testing. So we're going to go into the ACT and SAT. Um, so if you are a student that you have already tested, that's awesome. Or if you are scheduled to test, that's also um, great. You're getting started on that at a great time because it's giving you time to review your test scores and then having time to plan out those retests or retakes. Um, so with it being a big audience tonight, if you have not taken either of those tests, it is okay. Um, that's why we're meeting tonight. So you can kind of get an idea of what's important. So taking the ACT versus the SAT, um, 
if you are assuming that you've taken those pre-tests, look over those pre-test results because that's going to help you figure out which one was my better test if you have those pre-test scores. If you have no idea what those scores mean or how they compare, um, you can look up a concordance chart for the ACT and the SAT. Um, and so that way you can see which one is my better test. They test different subjects. Um, so say you're a student that really struggles in science, there's a science section on the ACT, there isn't on the SAT. Um, so that's why it's good to have those pre-tests. If you don't have the pre-test, sometimes that's why people will take both tests and then look at the concordance chart to figure out which one's their better test. And once you figure out which one's your better test, focus on that one test. Um, don't keep taking both tests because you prepare for them differently. That's a lot of time on you and extra stress with the retaking. So if you take a test and you um, do really well, and or you take the test and you're not sure if that's good enough um, for the schools that you're considering, when you look up a school and you're looking at their admissions page and it, shares their mid 50% range for test scores. That mid 50% range means 50% of their applicants had scores within this range. And it's a little tricky because of COVID, like some of the schools were test optional for a while, so not many people were reporting their scores. And now some schools are going back to having to um, report their scores. And so the best person, like if you're like, I don't know if um, this school does require it, I can't find it on their website checking in with the college reps at that school. Um, so if you can't find an answer on their admissions page regarding the standardized testing, what you should take, um, if it's required, checking in with the college rep. Um, I know a lot of times as students were intimidated to reach out to the colleges, they want you to reach out to them. Um, especially as a junior, you may, depending on your high school, have had the college reps come and visit your school. Um, that's one thing that, seniors are really involved in with doing the college rep visits in the fall. Um, so some high schools will do college rep visits in the spring for their juniors. So college rep visits is when the rep comes to your school or does what we're doing tonight and we'll meet virtually with students. Um, but that's a great way to ask about the test if you're not sure if you should take it or if your test score, you get your test score back and you're falling within that mid 50% range, you're feeling pretty confident about that score and you wanna know, should I retest? Is this good enough? Should I report it? Because it says it's test optional. Like those are great questions to ask to the college reps. Um, Cause sometimes it's hard to find on the website. And if you ask your college or your school counselor, they're gonna be able to give you general advice but they don't work for the individual colleges. Um, the other thing is, is you send your scores to colleges and if you are, applying to a school that super scores, that means they're gonna take your highest sections and then calculate a new score. So um, that's another thing to check on admissions pages. If a school super scores, or if you're not sure if they do and you can't find that out, another thing to ask to the college rep. Um, so when you take the test multiple times and you do better in different areas, um, that's where that super score can be better than that individual test score. Um, I guess next slide. And then we'll move on to academics. So I'm gonna preface with, this is a general statement. Um, when you meet with your college counselor or if you meet with a college advisor and they look at your transcript, they're gonna give you better advice about how many AP classes you should be taking. Um, junior year, is so important because this is your last year to have your grades calculate into your GPA before colleges start to see it. Um, so that's why it says achieve your highest performance during your junior year. Um, so at the beginning of the slide, it says four to five AP classes, junior and senior year. Yes, take as many AP classes as you can or that are available to you, but at the same time, you should be taking classes um, where you are ready to take the highest level possible. So that's why I said like meeting with your counselor about this, um, you're gonna get a better idea of how many you should take on for your senior year since you're currently a junior. And if you didn't take that many APs your junior year and you're panicking, it's okay. Like that's why I'm saying like, this is a very general statement. Um, when you figure out what's what's right for your future plans. Like that's where a counselor is gonna look at your transcript to make sure that you're taking the classes um, where you can score the best and do the best. So uh, as you progress through high school, you should continue to challenge yourself, especially in those areas where you do really well. You wouldn't continue to challenge yourself in an area you're struggling. So no one expects you to be the best student in every single subject, 
but this is where you want to take classes in your area of interest and really take those more difficult classes in those, especially if that's something that you're going to major in. And then um, keep in mind when you apply to college at the fall of your senior year, you don't have grades yet. So what the colleges will see on your transcript is the rigor of your senior year classes. So they're going to see what you are taking for your senior year. Um, so they, again, they want to see that you've progressively challenged yourself. So maybe junior year, you did really well, you've got A's in these classes, um, and you took a, you know, an honors level class, and then you bumped it up to the AP class year, senior year. Um, and the other thing, maybe your school has a cap on how many AP classes you can take. I hear that a lot. And so just know that when you apply to college and you are applying with your college application and you send your transcript, they also receive your school profile that lays out what's available to you. So maybe your school doesn't have that many AP classes, but it does work with the local community colleges and it has um, an abundance of dual enrollment classes. Take advantage of those because that's where the reader of your application is going to compare what did you take and what was available to you. So they want to see that your junior year, you challenged yourself, you did well, those grades are calculated into your GPA, but then they're going to really hone in on that senior year schedule. So this is where they want to see that you are, you know, continuing to challenge yourself because this is the last year before you go into college. So, um, a lot of times students are like, I want to take it easy as senior year. I've worked really hard. Junior year is super stressful. It is important to challenge ourselves still senior year. Um, there are colleges that will ask for your mid-year grades. So when I say they don't see your grades when you are applying in the fall, so if you're applying before, um, if you're a school that does um, block scheduling and you have grades that come out in January, they can see those if it's on your transcript at the time of applying. But if you apply to a school that has a college application deadline of October 15th or November 1st, you don't have senior grades on there yet. So they're going to really look closely at the senior year classes. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're picking your classes for senior year. Um, with you going on Christmas break, you're probably not thinking about that yet, and that's okay. Um, but that's why it's just letting you know how important these junior year classes are and doing well because the performance in them is going to go onto your transcript. Um, it's going to calculate into your GPA. So like I said at the beginning, um, you're on break, so this is your chance to recharge. But if you do have those um, exams coming up when you get back from break, or, um, you know, or you have a big test coming back, just it's important to take the time to study for it because junior year is really important. All right, next slide. Now we can move on to those extracurriculars. So this is your chance on the application um, to show off your story, to show off your achievements. Um, and so this is where, you know, you may have heard through high school, oh, I've got to join all these clubs so that way I can put it on my college application. Um, so it's great if you joined a lot of clubs, but what did you do within those clubs? Um, so what awards did you earn? And maybe like you're in a bunch of clubs right now and you haven't um, felt the need to put your hand up and say, I'm gonna go for um, a leadership role this year. Like this is a good, if you have not taken on a leadership role, the importance of it would be um, when you apply to colleges and you're listing all the extracurricular things that you're involved in, um, the readers of your application actually have a ranking system that they use. So they're gonna look at your extracurriculars and your, um, your involvement in them and then like the leadership so they're going to rank them into different tiers so your tier one being like your most rare opportunities um so maybe you went to an international biology competition and you were first place um so that would be like your tier one um and then tier two would be your more impressive achievements so things that are a bit more common so maybe like you were you played in the state orchestra or you are student body president. So taking on those leadership, those high leadership roles would be a good tier to fall into. Um, and then like tier three would be like captain of your soccer team or secretary of a certain club. And then your bottom tier, your tier four is your participation. So you're involved in a club. Um, so it's great to take on clubs, but don't just take them on to take them on. You wanna take them on to show um, 
that you're involved, you're a strong leader. And this is where like a theme is gonna be, start to develop in your um, college application. So this is showing you know, the things that you're involved in, the things that are important to you, your passion. Um, so it, when it says it should have a spike, so what is your passion and is it consistent with your major? So, um, you know, when you're listing all those different achievements and extracurriculars, um, this is where you wanna prioritize um, the things that go along and are consistent with what you want to go into. And this is the time not to be modest. So some people are like, oh, like, should I say this? Say it if you have space. Um, but again, don't make things up just to sound good because that can always backfire on you. So you want to make sure um, you're including everything that you've done, any awards. And also it's important with how you um, put it on the application. So rather than just saying like, I played soccer this amount of years, talk about the tournaments that you were involved in and any awards that you may have received through the season. So any way that you can be concise and specific to include more details so they can get a better picture of your achievements. Um, so that way you're not written off or just like, oh, the student played soccer. So like having more to it. Um, so when I say like be concise and specific, so having details in there, but you are gonna be limited on how many, um, how much space you have. So you can't be really wordy with that. So be concise and specific, but and also have those details in there. So if anything that you take away from extracurriculars, quality over quantity. Um, so it's junior year, time to bump it up with that leadership if you haven't um, already gotten involved or taken on any leadership roles in the clubs that you're involved in. All right, next slide. All right. Um, application, I think I'll just do application real quick, just talk about part of it, just so that way um, I can check for questions that have came up. So we'll go on to the next slide. All right, so I'm just gonna talk on um, building your school list. So if you have a school list already, that is awesome. Um, so some parents will ask like, how many colleges should be on my child's list? So a good like target number, 10 to 12 schools. So there's thousands of colleges out there. So building a school list is where you're gonna start narrowing it down. Um, so looking for schools that fit into the categories of safety. So school that matches your student's academic profile. Um, that you know that regardless, uh, you, that student is going to get into that school. So then you also have your target schools. So when you start looking at um, the mid 50% range of those colleges, you feel like you're fitting in there with the mid 50% range with your GPA, your test scores, and then your reach. If you are thinking about some Ivy League schools or you're thinking about some schools that are super competitive, that's great. Like go for them as long as you're backing it up with some um, safety schools and target schools. If you have not started your school list, that's okay too. Um, this is your time to do it. So if you're like, oh, I was just gonna relax all Christmas break. If you have not started that building your school list, I'd highly recommend that's what you focus your time on. Um, I know that College Vine has more live streams and that just focus on school lists alone. Um, and they also have you know, the chancing tool. So that way you can see what your chances are of getting into certain schools. Um, I know that Big Future through College Board um, has a feature where you can build your school list and that's where you're like putting things that are important to you, like as far as major, um, location of school, how competitive the school is to get into. So you put the criteria in and then it comes back with matches. And one thing that's great about um, Big Future is they also have a scholarship that you as a junior can be part of the scholarship um, program where they lay out tasks that you have to complete. And every time you complete a task, the building the school list is one of them. And every time you complete a task, you're able to um, be put in a bucket and pulled out for a scholarship. So they have it where students can start doing this um, as early as 10th grade year, but even as a junior, you can start doing some of the tasks. Um, and some of the tasks are actually focused on seniors, like completing your FAFSA, but there's different tasks in there that you can do um, that can help you also. So the purpose of it is that if you complete these tasks, you're on track for being ready for college. All right, so I talked about a lot of things that are important with what you should be doing junior year, um, but I went fairly quickly. So I imagine that there um, were some questions that came up. Um, so someone asked when to ask for the recommendations um, and if you should give your resume printed. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
I would say when to ask, so the end of junior year would be a great time to ask for those, um, for the recommendation. So again, like you don't expect your teacher to work on it over the summer, but one thing you have to keep in mind is teachers teach in the fall. Fall is busy for you, fall is busy for them. So a lot of teachers will have a cutoff. So they're gonna say like, I'm gonna write letters for 10, 20, 30 students, whatever it may be, they're gonna have their set cutoff. And so if you ask them in advance, you're getting on their list and make sure you write, especially those popular teachers. I don't know if you're in a big school or a small school, but there are some teachers that get asked by a lot of students um, just because they're popular or um, a lot of students take their class junior year. And that's when students are thinking about the letters of recommendation. So if you can ask before you go on um, summer break and asking them in person is just a lot more personable. So you can have a conversation about it. You're not just um, putting in an email, which can sometimes be very in person or personable. So um, that's a good thing thing to do ask them in person before you go out on summer break and then you can remind them when you come back in the fall um, and don't just assume that they're going to write it like you're asking them because you know that it is something that's time consuming and when you do get those letters one thing that um, as a school counselor I write many a thank you letter goes a long way so you never know like if you're going to need that person again later on so when they write you the uh, um, letter of recommendation you don't have to do that thank you right away maybe you wait until after you get into the your school that you've been dreaming of getting into um, but following up with a thank you letter goes a long way as well so someone had asked if they have taken the SAT four times already, like, um, and they want to take it a few more times. Is that bad? So taking it more times is giving you more practice. Um, but if you're not doing anything in between to improve your score, then it doesn't necessarily make sense to keep taking it. So making sure you are prepping between the times you take it. So some people like go through and like sign up for everyone. Um, it makes sense to sign up with enough time to prep before you take it again. Um, so I mentioned College Board before, but one thing that College Board offers is um, free customized prep, which means the customization is they're gonna, they can import your PSAT scores or SAT scores and work with Khan Academy. So that way they're giving you practice questions based on the ones you got wrong when you took the test. So customized prep is awesome. So that way you're spending your time focusing on the areas you need to improve rather than focusing your time on everything. Um, but that's the way you'll see more likely see it go up. So yes, you know, take that test again to see if your score goes up. But I would say if you're not doing anything to prep for it, that's you're not necessarily gonna see it go up. Um, in points. And um, just since we are, you know, getting close to the end here. So as far as, um, you know, there's a lot of things that I wasn't able to cover. So College Vine is awesome for giving you these opportunities to join the live streams, um, using the chancing tool to figure out what schools would be good matches for you. Um, but if you're left with like a need more coaching, that's where the College Vine advising comes in. So if you're needing more support and you want that more individualized um, help with the process. It's, it's unfortunate, but a lot of school counselors have so many students on their caseload and they can't meet with their students as much as they would like to. Um, and so if you're not able to get into your, you know, to meet with your school counselor, that's where having a college advisor is really helpful. So that way you have somebody you can reach out to. Um, so not just myself, but there are other college advisors out there that can give you um, advice on classes you should take. So a lot of these questions I'm seeing are very individualized. Um, so that's where a college advisor can help you like mapping out what makes sense for you to take senior year. I want my my schedule to be competitive, but at the same time, you don't want it to overwhelm you because one thing is, is you take on too much and you're not able to keep up, then your grades are going to suffer. And also senior year is going to be super stressful as it is because you have the college applications going on. And since this is a junior presentation um, and we talked about the testing, if you can get your testing done this year, that's only gonna make senior year less stressful. So college advising um, can just help you with a lot of the stress that's involved with planning for college. Um, just since I can't answer all these questions, that's where I think it's really gonna help you if you do have additional questions that your school counselor isn't able to meet with you about um, having taken advantage of the advising services. So that way you can have somebody look at your transcript, say the things that they see that are standing out, some things that you could do to improve, um, but also it can just make you feel more confident in the process because 
it is very overwhelming to apply to college. You've never done it before. Um, and he's, even at the parents that are in the audience, maybe this is your first student, like your first child going through the process, like it's intimidating. There's a lot of things you don't know. So working with a professional that's been through it um, can just make the process a lot less stressful. And that way you feel more confident going through it. Um, so that's my little spiel on the college advising and um, what college buying can help you with. So I hope the presentation um, gave you some information about what you could be doing junior year to prepare for your college um, admissions and know that I want you to take a break and enjoy this time with your family. But when you get back to school, junior year, like let's finish it out strong and do everything you can this year. So that way senior year goes much more smoothly. So thank you all for joining in tonight. Um, I love speaking on this topic, so I'd love to meet with some of you in the future and we can talk more. Have a great night.